Matthew Moore's MM Wood Studio. Today is Wednesday, August 19th, which means it's time for another weekly shop update. It's done, 100%, nothing else to do. Finished Gamble House rocking chair or inspired Gamble House rocking chair because it's not the, an exact replica of the Gamble House rocking chair, but it's pretty darn close. So um, yesterday I got home a little bit before four. I, uh, I work central hours, I'm on Pacific time. So I got home a little bit before four and I didn't go into the house, of course for dinner besides that. I didn't go back into the house until I finished, and that was a little bit after 12 last night. And um, before I tell you about last night and the finishing process, let me go through the couple things that have happened before then. So number one, uh, the rockers got attached, and uh, I did use acetone, just a little bit to help clean up the squeeze out. However, I decided to be a little bit more proactive than that, and I used some blue tape to tape around the joints, both on the rocker and on the legs, to help control the squeeze out. So when there was squeeze out, I pulled that blue tape off, the squeeze out came with it, and um, I just had a little bit of epoxy left to take off of the acetone. Now before I actually put the two pieces together, I primed the end grain of the legs. So what I mean by that is I put epoxy on the end grain, I let the end grain of the legs suck in that epoxy and then I kept applying it until I got a nice thin layer and that thin layer was not being pulled into the uh, wood anymore and that's when I knew I was ready to put these two together and screw in the rockers as well, put some epoxy in those screw holes and screw those guys in. Now to finish off the rockers I ended up putting ebony plugs above the screw holes. Now I used a tapered ebony plug cutter uh, to create the plugs. So uh, what that means is at the bottom it was a half an inch or just a little bit under a half an inch and above it's above a half an inch. So since my holes were not that deep and the plug was deeper than the holes I ended up going over to the bandsaw and with two uh, push sticks protecting my hands started the cut on those ebony plugs and then finished the cut at the bench with a dazuki saw and got a little bit left of those plugs, flushed them up with a block plane and a little bit of sanding and uh, my rockers were finished. Now I also did a couple of other things on the chair. I was looking at the footage of the chair of me sitting in it. I was looking at the chair itself and I thought to myself, you know what, let's make this thing last for 200 years. And I started thinking about it and I said, well I got some quarter inch mahogany uh, dowel stock around here. And uh, I've got a 5 16th of an inch hole uh, for my, a square hole for my ebony plugs. And that's what I did. So I ended up getting a, making a little drilling jig and drilling a quarter inch hole through my leg, through the tenon, through the mortise to the other side. And then I ended up hammering in those quarter inch mahogany pegs. Mainly I focused here where all of the racking forces, everything that may possibly um, try to you know, get the chair apart when you're sitting in it. And I ended up pinning every, all the rails uh, in the 5 16th of an inch ebony plugs right there. And then came back with my 5 16th of an inch uh, square hole punch and the drill bit that I used for that which is just slightly under the size of the hole and just drilled back those plugs until I got just a little bit down or enough down that I was able to throw my ebony plugs in and finish plugging up the chair of all of the quarter inch and five sixteenths of an inch ebony plugs. Even though I put a good amount of epoxy in here, very fair amount of epoxy, and I'm pretty sure these guys have all the gaps have been filled and the epoxy is holding this arm in really nicely into the leg. There's just a ton of stress on this joint. And so I thought, well, you know what? Let's just overbuild this chair. So to do that, I ended up putting the same quarter inch dowel stock, drilling a hole with a drilling jig through the rear leg into the arm 
and glue those two guys together using that doweling jig. And what that ends up giving me is just a small little piece of end grain back here. Um, and I'm totally cool with it. I think this is a great little piece. Is it in the original chair? No. Um, do I care? No. Because I think this structurally adds a lot to the chair to accomplish strengthening this connection. Then it was time to finish this bad boy up. So that's what I did last night. Um, I use a mixture of two things for this. Uh, a one pound cut of garnet shellac, which I made myself the night before, so it had enough time to, for the flakes to dissolve into the denatured alcohol. A one pound cut of shellac, that dries incredibly fast. Um, you're looking at maybe 20 minutes for an entire dry or less. And it was really hot here and it was considerably less time. So basically when I started one part of the chair and I came around to the other side of the chair and finished, that part of the chair was dry, the middle part was dry, and this part was just gonna start drying. Um, so I was able to do a whole coat and then basically start again and coat the rest of the chair. And um, I applied five coats of that. Now the, after the first two coats, I sanded. And then the third, fourth coats I did not sand between those two, but I sanded the fourth and I applied the fifth. Now on coat, after coat number two, I used 320 grit paper on the whole chair. After coat number four, I used 600 grit paper on the whole chair. Very light pressure, almost no pressure at all. So after five coats of that, it was time to jump over to the Black Bison Tudor Oak Liberon wax. Now you guys have seen me use this before, not the first time. This comes from Christopher Schwartz's recipe for an easy mahogany finish. And um, I really love what it does. First of all, it tints the wood, um, which is great. It adds wax itself, gets into the pores and into all the little nooks and crannies on the chair too. And what's great about that is it helps immediately age the chair or whatever the piece is, so for me, the chair. And I love that look. I love the little bit of buildup of the wax on the joints. It makes it look older immediately. Um, and it's just a really nice look. So mahogany, if you leave it alone and you just put like a clear finish or something like that, it'll stay orange and up like a brighter orange. And then over time, just like many woods, it'll age and it'll become a deep, dark um, orange reddish color and um, this just gets you there right away so you have that feeling of an older piece of mahogany something that you would think of that you would find in an old library or um, I don't know some old home somewhere and that's what's great about this finish you get that result right out of the can literally so um, that's what I did and when you do this, you have to work it in sections. You can't just do the whole chair and then come back. Because um, this stuff, when it dries, it dries. And so what I mean by that is this goes on as a liquid. It's like a liquidy wax. And I uh, spread it around, use a scotch Brite pad, and then you wipe it off after it flashes. And so I mean by flashes, it kind of it goes from being liquid and turns to being more solid and right when it has that turn and it's usually about five minutes ten minutes depending on the heat I was really hot last night so I was going pretty quick um, and you just wipe that off right away and, you, and you, when you wipe it off you're buffing at the same time and that buffing gives you a nice smooth surface so that's it I mean the chairs done now there's still some stuff left for me to do on the project so for instance I gotta shoot the opening video for the um, actual build itself. That's always chapter one in my projects. And um, in total, I have filmed 32 chapters. Well, 31, skipping the first, but there'll be 32 chapters in total to this project. And I did something a little bit different this time than I did in, say, the living room armchair project. And I didn't try to bundle or combine steps into um, one chapter. So each chapter really is one specific step in the project. Let's take a look at some better angles on the chair 
Here's a side profile, the chair straight on from the back. One of my favorite angles, which is you get to see both the side and the back of the chair at the same time. And the straight on approach to the chair. Here are some details a little closer up. The carvings in the rear section of the rockers, one right below the rear leg, and then the same pattern in the back of the rocker that is in the arms on the chair. The side panel and all the ebony plugs around it. All the sterling silver inlay in the ebony bars and this cathedral pattern on the center back slide as it moves up into the crest rail with that great grain providing this circular pattern in the crest rail up to the peak. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that's it for me this week. Um, it was a really great week for me in the shop. Um, I, I'm ecstatic. Uh, just absolutely ecstatic. I can't wait to bring the chair into the house. The Black Bison Libron Wax leaves a little bit of an odor. I actually like the odor. I've gotten so used to it um, from using it in all these projects, these green and green projects I've done. So I'm gonna bring it into the house and enjoy the odor in the house. It's not that bad actually. In a couple days, it'll disappear. And of course, as always, please subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and have a great week in the shop.